everyone. My name is Madalena Banarescu, and my PhD title thesis is Approaches to Reconstruction of Oral Maxillofacial Defects Based on Virtual Surgical Planning. Uh, my vision is to improve the life quality of patients with oromaxillofacial defects, and my mission is to improve the aesthetics and functional, functional outcomes. Uh, I have uh, two ongoing projects. The first project is investigating the effectiveness of intraoperative surgical navigation over conventional surgery in the management of zygomatic maxillary complex fractures. It's a, it is a systematic review and a meta-analysis. Uh, we can see that it's uh, a big number of uh, new cases of facial fractures uh, globally, and the prevalence of uh, zygomatic maxillary complex fractures is pretty high. But what's most concerning is that uh, a big number of these patients have a remaining mid-facial deformity after conventional surgical treatment. Well, with the help of intraoperative surgical navigation, we believe we can improve that. Intraoperative surgical navigation basically works very similar as a, a GPS system uh, used for uh, the cars, but in which we can use, for example, the patient CT as a map, but the map is not enough. We also need a destination. So we believe we have the best de destination, and this is where virtual surgical planning helps us a lot, we, because we can mirror the healthy side of the patient and create the perfect plan to guide us uh, in the reconstruction technique. And this is why our aim is to assess the accuracy in treating zygomatic maxillary complex fractures with the help of intraoperative surgical navigation. So our question was that if, inter if intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective than conventional surgery, and we compared the conventional surgery assisted by intraoperative surgical navigation and not assisted, and we investigating first the accuracy and then the operative time, mouth opening, amount of bleeding, and other outcomes. Of course, our, hy our hypothesis was that intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective than conventional surgery. Here you can see the systematic search we did uh, uh, in three uh, databases. And after the selection, we end up with uh, five articles included in our analysis. Now, you would believe that um, driving with a GPS would surely get you to the right destination. Well, <laughs> we were very surprised to see that it's not always the case because we all know that driver. Uh, first, we investigated the, accu the uh, accuracy of the intervention for the most prominent point. We investigated the most prominent point because it plays a very important role in the aesthetics uh, of the face. And the, it, this is the, one of the most uh, encountered problems when it comes to zygomatic maxillary complex fractures. Uh, we measured mean differences between the navigation and the control group, and we, uh, uh, we found that there was no difference between the, uh, between the two groups. Secondly, we investigated the accuracy at the level of uh, infraorbital rim. We investigated this landmark because the zygomatic fractures are often associated with orbital fractures, but even if they are not associated with orbital fractures, uh, there are uh, a pretty high number of complications related to the eye globe positioning. And this is one of the landmarks that help, help, help us see how accurate we can restore the aesthetics also of, of the eye globe, not only the zygomatic bone. But we also saw no, no difference between the two groups. However, we also investigated the post-operative average deviation. We investigated this outcome basically by superimposing the pre-operative plan with the actual post-operative result. And by superimposing the images, we found out the average deviation uh, of the zygomatic bone. And this is where we found the difference between the, uh, the two groups. However, it is pretty hard to say if this difference is relevant um, uh, in a clinical situation or not. Uh, we also investigated the uh, operative time because our hypothesis was also that it could reduce the operative time because of, the, uh, of how complicated these fractures are to reduce. However, we also did not find any difference between the two groups. We also investigating 
uh, maximum mouth opening because one of the common complications of the zygomatic fractures is uh, a limitation in the, uh, in the mouth opening of the patients, but we also did not find any difference uh, between the two groups. Uh, we have a few strengths, which is that this is the first meta-analysis meta -analysis on, on intraoperative surgical navigation in treating zygomatic or maxillary fractures, and we're investigating multiple outcomes. However, of course, we have also some limitations, such as small number of uh, studies included. We could not investigate the soft tissue, with also, which also plays an important role in the aesthetic uh, and the result uh, the aesthetical result uh, of the patient, and uh, our studies included uh, multiple types of fracture. Our conclusion is that intraoperative surgical navigation could improve, could improve postoperative average deviation. Um, however, no significant difference was found uh, for the accuracy uh, or operative time or uh, mouth opening and other outcomes that we could not include in this presentation uh, right now. Uh, it is important for practice because our, our results suggest that intraoperative surgical navigation could assist better with the more severe cases of fractures and it could also help the, uh, help the young surgeons because for them it is really hard to learn this um, uh, technique and be confident in reducing uh, the fracture. But it's also important to note that it's um, a pretty steep learning curve. Uh, and uh, this is important not only for the young surgeons but also for the uh, experienced one because every system requires learning. The implication for research are numerous, but we need to, of course, we need more studies to investigate uh, the, uh, the different types of fractures uh, separately. We need to measure the actual time uh, 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 for using the, this system during the operation. We need also to investigate the orbital volume, and we need the number of preoperative measurements uh, such as the maximum mouth opening, and also we need to investigate uh, the soft tissue. Uh, the manuscript uh, is ready, and we hope soon, maybe even these days, we can send it to the uh, internal review and uh, submit it uh, to the Journal of Cranio-Maxillofacial Surgery. The second topic uh, is investigating the use of virtual surgical planning, but this time in mandibular reconstruction, uh, the same over the conventional uh, technique. It's uh, also a systematic review and a meta-analysis. Uh, it's the same thing with the maxillofacial reconstruction techniques are uh, a challenging task uh, because of the functional and more importantly aesthetic uh, implication for the patients. And several studies already suggested that virtual surgical planning could help reduce operative time and uh, increase accuracy. Uh, this is why we aim to achieve functional and uh, better functional and uh, aesthetics, uh, aesthetic result. Uh, our question is formed uh, the same if virtual surgical planning is more effective than conventional surgery uh, over the conventional technique. And we also want to investigate accuracy, operative time, ischemia time, cost, complication, and hospital stay. Our hypothesis is that virtual surgical planning uh, is more effective in mandibular reconstruction than the conventional technique. However, you can see here the preliminary search, but this project is in the early phases uh, as we are trying to submit the uh, first manuscript first. So this is our summary. We are, we are hoping soon to submit the first project, maybe even uh, next month, and uh, we plan to finish the second project in October this year. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, presentation. I would like to ask uh, that how large uh, deviation would you consider significant clinically uh, based of your first project? Thank you. It's pretty hard to say, and it's pretty hard to say because, as I mentioned, what we are lacking is the investigation of the soft tissue. Because if we have a small difference with a patient that has a larger amount of soft tissue, uh, then the uh, level of uh, deviation for the accuracy could be larger. 
but if we uh, we are faced with a patient that has very few soft tissue then maybe even a smaller amount of uh, deviation could be actually really important so it's a really hard number to give if you have the the literature says that uh, a deviation of more than two millimeters would be uh, clinically visible for the patient. However, it also depends at what level uh, are those two mi millimeters, because it's one thing if it's at the level of, for example, the most prominent point, and maybe I don't know if it's uh, in the um, uh, zygomatic or maxillary uh, articulation, which is not that visible. So it really depends even that number where it is uh, situated. This is why we we also wanted to investigate the average deviation to, because we can have like a small deviation at a certain landmark, but when we measure the three-dimensional average deviation, the result might be uh, a bit different. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is uh, related to your first project. You had uh, the first plot of um, operative time, and one of the studies um, had a much higher mean difference than the others. Uh, can you explain why? Because it's a huge difference. Yes, of course. Thank you for your question. So uh, I mentioned for the limitation that we investigated multiple types of fractures. So there are, we investigating uh, the complete fracture of the zygoma and then uh, other studies investigated also the uh, complete fracture but comminuted fracture. So that study to which uh, are you uh, referring uh, included the most severe types of uh, type uh, of fractures, and it also included uh, only delayed fractures, which are considerably harder to treat and harder to reduce and harder to achieve the, uh, uh, let's say, accepted accuracy for the patient. And this is why in that study was uh, also bigger the difference between the accuracy between the two groups and also the bigger the uh, operative time. One question stuck me that uh, why was so important that uh, the month op in the first project, you know, uh, why was so important to mention in the conclusion that the month opening was uh, influenced or limited uh, because it was uh, uh, represented on your conclusions? Um, thank you. So I mentioned about the preoperative measurements and the mouth opening because the majority of the studies only measured the maximum mouth opening after the intervention. However, in some cases, there is no modification in uh, uh, the level of mouth opening. So this is why I mentioned that we need some preoperative measurements. So we need to uh, measure how uh, much was, the, how large was the limitation in mouth opening before the surgery and after the surgery to see if there, there was actually an improvement or not. Thank you so much.